Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. Let him go, Danny shouted. His two older brothers, Cal and Pete, opened the gate, and the stallion, driven by Danny, rushed into the paddock. Cal's face broke into a grin. Pete squinted, watching through the swirling dust as the Mustang furiously tried to throw off his younger brother. The 20-year-old rider clutched the reins with one hand and waved convulsively in the air with the other. Another jolt made him jump in the saddle. Danny, oh my God, stop it. Millie, Danny's fiance cried excitedly. Pete turned his gaze to his younger brother's fiance, who was excitedly shouting and waving her arms, jumping slightly, trying to attract the attention of her future husband. Her corn-colored hair glistened in the bright sunlight. Under her satin cream blouse, Millie's breasts swayed erotically, making Pete excited. Hold on, Danny. Hold on, boy, Cal shouted. You almost made it. Pete continued to watch Millie. He did not see his younger brother look around for the admiring eyes of his bride. Pete also missed a vicious Mustang kick that sent Danny flying out of the saddle. And when Millie screamed in fright and began to climb up the fence, the 26-year-old brother glanced briefly at his brother, who was writhing in the dust and immediately returned his gaze back to Millie. Watch out for that bastard horse, Cal shouted, who was one step ahead of the girl. He grabbed Millie by the arm and pulled her out of the way of the distraught stallion. Oh, look at Danny, Millie was screaming in despair. Take a look, he's alive. Yes, hell yeah, snorted Cal. He's just a little bruised. Cal walked over to his brother and squatted down next to him. A handsome, dark-haired young man was lying on the ground wincing in pain and holding his hip with his hands. There was a grimace of pain on Danny's face. Dan, are you okay? Cal asked. I'm thinking my leg is broken. Danny groaned. Trust me, it hurts like hell. Oh no, Millie moaned and bent over her fiance. Pete sauntered up behind the blonde. Help me carry him into the house. Cal's voice snapped Pete out of his fantasies. Let him lie here, Pete replied. If... He broke something. It should not be moved. But we can't just leave him here, Millie protested. Take the damn horse back to the stable, Pete said to Cal. I'll call Doc Carpenter. Oh dear, Danny whispered, trying to smile at his girlfriend. Millie sobbed, stroking his dust-covered face. It will teach you. It's less showing off, Pete said softly. You know, sometimes you can be so damn mean, Cal told him. A look of displeasure flashed in Cal's eyes. He turned to catch the horse, which trotted to the opposite side of the paddock. They'll find someone to help you, honey, Millie said, continuing to stroke Danny's hand. Just try to lie still. Have you seen me, dear? On horseback? Danny asked, and there was a glint in his pain-ridden eyes for a moment. I was. Really on horseback. I would have broken it, too. If only I didn't get distracted a bit. Honey, don't try to talk, Millie pleaded pressing her fiancé's head against her firm, elastic chest. Everything will be fine. Oh, how long does it take this doctor to get here? As the ambulance pulled away from the white frame ranch house and headed down the long driveway to the road, Millie began to cry inconsolably. He's going to be fine, Gus Hinshaw said, hugging his future daughter-in-law by her slender waist. Don't worry, my sons are made of durable material. Every single one of them. Millie, through tears, smiled at her future father-in-law. She liked the groom's father from the very beginning, which she couldn't say about Danny's brothers. Pete was always silent and looked at her sternly. Cal was a little friendlier, but he always made remarks to her. Danny was nothing like them. Gus Hinshaw, who was in his fifties, climbed heavily onto the porch and opened the creaking screen door. He held her back, letting Millie enter the house first and giving her a smile. Pete and Cal followed their father into the house. Interesting. Will Danny have to stay in the hospital? Millie said, settling into an armchair in the living room. I think it depends on the x-rays, Gus replied. One thing is for sure. He'll be lying down for a while. Will it be a little hard for you, Millie? Yes, Cal asked. I mean, what are you, the bride and groom? Well, uh, and all that. He couldn't suppress a slight grin. Shut up. Gus barked, seeing how the girl turned away in embarrassment. You and Pete get out of here, and mind your own business. We have nothing to do right now, Cal said. Come on. 
You heard your father? Pete interjected, heading for the door. Yes, but... Pete poked his younger brother in the ribs. Cal glanced at Millie, then turned and followed Pete out of the house. Don't take it too personally, dear, Gus advised, pulling out his pipe and starting to fill it. Accidents happen. I'm sure everything will be fine. I hope that's the case. I do not know why the doctor did not allow me to go to the city with him. Because there's nothing you can do. Gus lit his pipe and blew out smoke. Don't worry. They'll be calling soon. And we'll find out everything. I'll tell Rose now. To call me right away. The elder Hinshaw left the room to find the Mexican housekeeper. Millie was lost in thought. Her thoughts took her back a week. To her and Danny's first night, although she and Danny had made love daily since then, it was their first night, which was forever etched into Millie's memory. Conditioned by the incessant sermons of her man-hating mother, Millie grew up burdened with inhibitions and fear. She had avoided dating for a long time and mentally shuddered at the thought of marriage. Until I met Danny and fell head over heels in love with him. Two days after her 18th birthday, Millie ran away from home with Danny. They stayed at a motel for the night. Millie felt a growing fear. When the lights in their room went out and Danny walked over to the bed, the girl had a great desire to run away and hide. But her love for Danny made her stay and hope that he would turn out to be different from the selfish, lustful men her mother constantly talked about. Tense and anxious, Millie waited to see if her hopes would be fulfilled, or her fears. As soon as Danny came back from the shower, took off his robe and slipped into bed with her, Millie was shocked to find that he was completely naked. What? No. Where are your pajamas? What is it? She asked in a trembling voice. I don't have it, her fiancé replied with a laugh. And you don't need it either. He quickly ran his hand over Millie's nightgown, exciting her by caressing her full elastic breasts through the fabric. Danny immediately began to pull off her nightgown. No, she whispered. What do you mean, no? Honey, we were going to make love. And we don't need your nightgown at all right now. Danny, I'm scared, she blurted out. He stared at her shadowed face. Are you afraid? Oh, yes. Oh, baby. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'll be gentle with you. He touched his lips to her neck, continuing to stroke her breasts through the transparent fabric. I'm the guy you've been dating all these weeks. I won't hurt you. Yes, but we've never been without clothes. And Millie stopped talking and held her breath. Danny snuggled up to her. What's the matter? Danny asked, hugging her. Yours, you're the thing. He laughed softly in her ear. You mean that? Danny, it's quite difficult, isn't it? His voice became hoarse. It's because I want you so much. It's going to hurt me, Millie whispered. Maybe a little, for the first time, but you can handle it. Come on, don't be afraid, baby. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm sure. You'll like it. And you, then, you'll want to make love yourself. As much as I do. Danny, don't say obscenities. Isn't it indecent to say make love? The young man asked indignantly. What do you want me to call it? There's a worse word I could use? No. Danny sat up in bed and stared at his trembling girlfriend. Now look, we're getting married soon, honey. I let you stop me all the time. But now everything is different. You are my bride. I'm your fiancé. And now we can make love to you. I understand. I will treat you gently. But we're going to do it. Millie, honey. So there's no point in being stupid about it. It's going to happen anyway. And you promised. Millie froze, suddenly coming to the conclusion that her mother had been right all along. Men are selfish animals. And Danny is just like everyone else. He thinks only of himself. Millie started to resist. The offended and angry guy reacted in a way that seemed to confirm Millie's fears. He pressed her hard against the mattress and climbed on top of her. Panic-stricken, Millie tried to slap him or claw at him, but Danny managed to catch her wrists and pin them to the bed. Looking down, breathing heavily, the man Millie fell in love with seemed to have turned into a monster. Danny let go of one of her hands and grabbed the top of her nightgown. With a violent tug, he tore the thin fabric from the front. The torn edges parted to reveal her heaving chest. Her swaying, round breasts were exposed. Millie screamed and tried to pull away. Baby, oh baby. Danny moaned, pressing his lips to one of the pink bumps. 
Millie gasped loudly at the unfamiliar and incredibly pleasant sensations. Her body trembled. She became hot and wet. Danny raised his head and smiled warmly at her. I'm sorry, honey, that I tore your nightgown, he said. But we have to do it right. You're so pretty. God, honey, I love you. I adore you. He pressed his lips to hers. Danny's tongue rushed furiously into her mouth, filling it, caressing her tongue. His hand cupped her breast and rhythmically squeezed it, making the sensitive flesh throb. Millie's fear suddenly disappeared. A wave of pleasure and passion swept over her, stronger than anything she had ever imagined. Danny tore her shirt to the end. Danny got off her, and Millie relaxed a little. But when his hand slid down her smooth, trembling belly and rested on her crotch, the girl gasped. Danny smiled. His fingers parted her labia and penetrated her wet cleft. Are you ready, honey? Is that what you want? He asked gleefully. I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm not sure. Danny took her hand and brought it to him. Danny, it's going to hurt me, she exclaimed. Danny slid between her full, firm thighs and spread them wide. Danny sighed and leaned forward. Millie lay motionless under him. Only her soft breasts rose and then fell high. She felt like she was on a carnival ride that had slowed down, preparing for another frenzied explosion. But there was no explosion. Millie found herself experiencing a vague and unsatisfied feeling of arousal. Is it over? Is that all? She asked in surprise. Danny sat up. He grinned boyishly. Pretty good, huh? I, I think so, Millie said. That's it. What did mom warn me about so much? Millie asked herself in amazement. But this, I don't even like it. Baby, you're wonderful, Danny purred, snuggling up to her and wrapping her in his strong arms. I love you. I love you too, Millie answered almost mechanically. At that moment, she wasn't sure how she felt about it, except that her nerves remained tense, and she was no longer afraid. Less than a minute later, Danny and Millie fell asleep, hugging each other. Millie came to her senses from a strange feeling. The room was still dark. Danny was lying on top of her. It all seemed to happen on its own, and Millie didn't realize what she was doing yet. She whispered, Yes, ooh, this, that's great, I like it. Yes, croaked Danny. Yes, oh, damn it. Oh my God, she whispered. Wow, baby, you are incredible, Danny exclaimed. The tremor stopped, and warmth spread inside Millie. She wrapped her legs and arms around her beloved boyfriend and clung tightly to his body. They lay panting and moaning and the bliss that swept over their bodies in the middle of the night. Millie, the doctor just called. Breaking out of her memories, the girl looked questioningly at the groom's father. What did he say? How's Danny? Calm down, honey. Gus smiled. His eldest son stood behind him. Cal had a funny grin on his face. Pete was gloomy as always. Danny's coming home, Gus said. That means he's all right. Millie exclaimed, oh, thank God. He's going to be fine, Gus corrected her. He's got a broken hip, and he doesn't have to stay in the hospital. I decided it would be better. If you could be there for him and take care of him. Besides, the hospital costs a lot of money, which we don't have right now. How long will he be lying down? Doc's not sure, Gus said. Maybe a month. It's hard to say. Oh. Disappointment escaped Millie's lips. Yes, Millie? A difficult break? Cal said sarcastically. She turned her stunned gaze to the stocky young man who was standing with his legs wide apart. He swayed back and forth slightly. His tight jeans accentuated the bulge in his groin. Millie looked up quickly, confused. She saw a faint smirk on Cal's face. Millie looked at Pete, who was staring at her intently. His dark, hard eyes were as unreadable as ever. The girl covered her face with her hands and began to cry softly. Millie went out onto the porch. She wiped her sweaty forehead with the back of her hand and looked into the distance at the rolling pastures. In the distance, purple mountains merged with the sky. The bright sun flooded the landscape, keeping the temperature at 90 degrees. Warm for northern Nevada, especially in late September. Dr. Carpenter left a few minutes ago. Millie helped him install an ingenious device of cables and blocks necessary to support Danny's leg, after which she stayed in the groom's room and tried to make him as comfortable as possible. Danny was good-natured about the whole thing, but Millie felt terribly depressed. The screen door creaked behind her and she turned around. Cal went out onto the porch. 
Danny's a lucky guy. He has a pretty nurse himself. Who will take care of him? He grinned. Millie turned away from him without saying anything. Cal walked over to her and stood next to her. She wished he would just leave. Millie didn't want to talk to anyone right now. It's really hot, isn't it? Cal asked. Yes. This kind of weather makes me think about lying under a nice, cool, shady tree with a pretty girl. Do you understand what I mean? Cal slid his hand down the small of Millie's back, his palm resting on her side. Cal felt the elastic of her panties under her light dress. She tensed, turned to face him, shrugging off his hand. Someone like you, Cal continued, his voice lower than usual. How can you say that Danny is lucky? When is he in that terrible cast? Millie shot Cal a scornful look. But he won't have any work for a while, and Pete and I will have to work twice as hard. Then why don't you get down to business? I wanted to tell her, but she didn't say anything. Millie moved to the other side of the porch. Heck, I would love to lift up her skirt and pull off her panties. Damn that, Danny. How it turned out, that my snotty little brother picked up such a hot chick. And also, it'll be falling down for a whole month. For now, Pete and I will work hard for the three of us. And this beauty will please him. But here, Cal smiled. He won't be able to use it. It's going to be hard for both of them. If I'm not mistaken, this little filly must like to be used. Why are you standing there? Pete came out on the porch and brought his brother back from heaven to earth. We still need to fix this fence. Damn it, don't you think I know that? Cal growled, and his voice warmed a little as he added, See you later, Millie. Yes, she said without looking back. What is this thing? Pete said under his breath as the brothers headed for the barn. Why have we never seen her in Kenyon? How come Danny picked her up? Why does he always manage to pick up hot chicks? I saw it. She worked as a salesman at Connolly's store. Danny always knew how to handle them, unlike you. I'm going to get her, Pete said. Cal looked at him. You sound like you're serious. Damn right, I'm doing it. Father will kill us. If he finds out. How old are you, Cal? You know that. Twenty-four. I'm twenty. Six. Pete said, Why do we have to put up with his shit all the time? Come on, Cal chuckled. You're always silent when he screams. Because he's usually right. Every man makes his own decisions. Yes, but... Anyway, it's better if you leave Millie alone, Pete said as they entered the barn. So I'll have a free field. Do you really think you can get it? Damn it, I know I can. On the porch, Millie kept thinking about Cal's arm around her waist, and the way he talked. I don't like him, but... However, it was exciting. Heck, what I'm thinking about. Danny and I are going to get married. But... Oh my God. Why did this accident have to happen right now? At night, the prairie sky was like a black velvet pincushion, full of pinheads that sparkled like diamonds. The air was still warm and a light, pleasant breeze was blowing. Millie just left the house. A few minutes ago, I made Danny comfortable by putting a pillow under his back. I didn't like being a nurse. This job is incredibly annoying to me. She turned the corner of the house and stopped on a small patch of lawn. Noticing that there was no dew, she sat down on the grass. The breeze ruffled her hair pleasantly. From the pasture, a faint intermittent roar of cattle could be heard from time to time. She closed her eyes. Courting Danny is driving me crazy. It's been five days now. And in front. Oh, I don't mind if I keep you company. A man's voice rang out in the silence of the night. Millie started and turned towards the voice. You scared me. Pete. I'm sorry. Pete said, sinking down on the grass next to her. I thought about it. Maybe you're bored, and you'll want to have a little chat. Millie looked at Pete in surprise. Yes, I want to talk. Danny slept most of the day. I was bored sitting next to him, unbearably boring. But for the days I've been at the ranch, Pete said a little more than a dozen words to me. Or maybe he's not as bad as he seems. Millie smiled at Pete. It's so beautiful here at night she said. I like the silence. I spent a week in Frisco once, he said. I could barely sleep because of all those damn cars and sirens. Millie leaned back and put her hands on the grass behind her. Pete looked at her full, firm breasts. They are incredibly beautiful. The biggest city I've ever been to. This is Reno, she said, not noticing his frank gaze. It was quite exciting. 
Reno, it is okay. If a man likes to gamble and do things like that. And you know, Millie glanced at Pete and caught his gaze directed at her breasts. She straightened up and Pete quickly looked away. Millie felt a little uncomfortable. His look says I'm pretty. And be aware of it. I'm pleased. A quick smile appeared on her face. I really like it here, Millie said after a short pause. Yes, I like it too, but I want to try something different. Do you want to leave? I'm thinking about it. And the father, and Cal, and Danny. I don't think father will like it. Cal wants to too. And Danny, Danny says he wants to be a rancher all his life. What does he understand? He's still just a kid, a big kid. He's two years older than me. You're a girl. Girls grow up earlier. There was silence for a while. Pete and Millie were thinking about their own things. Tell me, how come you're going to marry such a young guy? I'm in love with Danny. She smiled. Anyway, he's the right age for me. Are you sure about this? Pete looked at her intently. Millie felt a little uncomfortable under his gaze. She wanted to get up and go back inside, but she didn't want to hurt Pete. I'm sure I love Danny, she said. Pete felt disappointed. His verbal attack got him nowhere. This was usually the case when he was with a girl. He often had problems communicating with girls. My tongue is not as loose as Danny's. Everything is easy for him. I don't have the boyish appeal that girls like either, but I have one. What they need. I've never had any complaints from a girl whose resistance I was still able to break, and I'm sure Millie will like it too. But how? Or maybe. Pete's strong arms turned Millie around to face him. She gasped, but before she could make a sound, Pete's lips pressed against her soft lips. His tongue opening her mouth rushed inside. Pete knocked her to the ground, pinning her to her with his body. How can he behave like this? He's Danny's brother. Recovering from the first surprise, Millie began to struggle, squirming in his tight embrace, trying to tear her mouth away from his. But Pete was pinning her firmly with her back to the ground, and her attempts to free herself only made her breasts sway and rub against him, arousing him even more. Millie felt dizzy. The insolent tongue of her Pete, spinning in her mouth, caused her the same excitement that only Danny could have caused before. Millie hit the guy on the back with her free hand, but her punches had no effect. He continued to hold her. Pete slid his hand up her chest. He squeezed a large elastic melon through her dress and bra. A new strong excitement gripped Millie. No, no, this is terrible. I can't let him do that. Pete's hot breath burned her as he pressed his open mouth against hers, hurting her lips with brutal pressure. His wet, fleshy tongue slid over her tongue and the walls of her mouth. His hand, which was now covering her breast, convulsively squeezed the warm, soft flesh, causing her nipple to swell. Millie felt a heat in her lower abdomen. She hated what was happening. Millie knew it was wrong, but her young body reacted very differently. Almost as if she were with Danny. She was completely baffled by this. Pete's hand slid down her stomach, leaving a hot trail on her skin. He stroked her pubic bump through her clothes and Millie trembled deep inside. In desperation, she turned on her hip so that he could no longer touch her most intimate place. Pete's hand slid down her thigh, along her skirt, to her bare skin. Millie's thigh tingled where he touched her body. Panting and making agonizing noises, the distraught girl raised her knee, trying to shake off his hand. But this hand slid up the back of her smooth thigh, under her skirt, and grabbed her buttock. He squeezed the juicy elastic hemisphere, pressing the fabric of her panties into the gap between her buttocks with his fingertips. Humiliated and agitated by the shocking intimate contact, Millie squirmed, shaking her buttocks. Twisting wildly, Millie finally tore her mouth away from Pete's. She was going to scream, No. No, this will cause a noise. Danny might not understand. And he'll blame me for everything. Please, stop it, she hissed at Pete, panting and trying to break free from his iron grip. He responded with a passionate moan into her sweet neck, and his lustful fingers penetrated the elastic band of her panties. Grabbing a thin elastic band, Pete pulled the panties down. Pete, no. You're welcome. No need, she whispered again. The cool air touched her bare buttocks, followed by Pete's work-roughened hand. He stroked her back slit, grabbing both satin buttocks and squeezing them together. Oh my God, Millie exclaimed. 
Her hips were heaving convulsively, her mound rubbing against Pete's boner. He caught her mouth again, filling it with his tongue again. She couldn't think anymore. Her strength was draining from her body, and the excitement was taking over her body with incredible speed. Feeling the lack of resistance, Pete pulled off her panties, sliding the elastic band over her hot thighs. He left them on her lap like a silk rope and pinned her back to the lawn again. Millie gasped as her bare ass sank into the thick, tickling grass. Pete put his hand on her hairy mound and it was like an electric shock went through her body. But Millie's mind kept screaming with the last of its strength. Her sense of humiliation was joined by a soul-numbing fear. She had never thought that a man could take her by force. Millie was always confident that she could keep her legs together and fight back, but now she was no longer confident in her ability to resist. Something incomprehensible was working inside her, forcing her to give up. Although she hated Pete with all her heart. Hey, wait up, Pete exclaimed. Millie jumped to her feet and ran towards the house, sobbing. Her thighs slid wetly over each other. Her buttocks looked shockingly loose against the swaying skirt. Pete remained kneeling on the grass. What? He growled, slamming his clenched fist on the ground. At that moment, Millie's soft pink panties caught his attention. He picked them up from the lawn, stretching the elastic band with both hands and shaking them into shape. Pete pressed them to his face and inhaled Millie's intimate scent. Then he put the panties in his jeans pocket. She won't tell anyone about what happened. And she liked it. And deep down, she hopes that it will happen again. That's how it's going to be, baby. You will be mine. I'll get to you next time. The TV in the living room was on. Gus and Cal were laughing at a comedy show. They did not pay attention to Millie, who quickly ran up the stairs to the second floor. She went straight to her room, the room she shared with Danny on the day she arrived. And now she was the only one occupying it. Carefully closing the door, the excited and trembling girl went to the mirror on the dresser. Her blonde hair was in a mess and there were grass stalks in it. Still trembling, she picked up a comb and began to comb through the long, silky strands. Then Millie stopped and stared into her reflected eyes, trying to read what was in them, trying to figure out why she reacted the way she did to Pete. Why is she still trembling with sudden excitement? What kind of person are you? She asked her image. There was no response. After Millie calmed down and made sure that her appearance did not give any hints of what had happened, she walked through the hallway to Danny's room. He smiled happily at her when she entered. Hi, baby. Come here. Millie smiled at him, too. How are you feeling? Not really. How can a young guy feel when he's lying with a broken leg? And there's an incredible beauty sitting next to him, Danny said with a smile, taking her hand in his. Tell me, too. Where have you been, honey? Uh, on the street. The sky is incredibly beautiful here. And such beautiful stars. Hey, it's not fair. You shouldn't look at the stars if I'm not with you. This applies to the moon, too. Silly, she said, laughing softly. Danny put his hand on her leg. Gently stroking her thigh, her hand crept up, under the hem of the skirt. As the guy's hand rose higher, Millie felt aroused again. Danny's hand moved smoothly from his hip to his buttock. His eyes widened. Where are your panties? Millie blushed. I, uh, I took them off. I wanted to take a shower. Oh, Millie, Danny said, squeezing her buttock. I would advise you. Don't run around here without them. I have two horny brothers. Yes, and my old man. I haven't completely fallen into insanity yet. Danny, I am. Millie felt her heart beat faster. Danny's eyes narrowed. Feel me, he said softly. What? Danny. Oh, for God's sake. He took her hand and brought it to the crotch of his pajamas where a sheet covered him. Millie's eyes widened. Danny, you're him. It's solid. Damn it, yes. Do you see what one touch to your ass can do? Oh, Danny, aren't you ashamed of talking like that? She said, trying to pull her hand away. Oh, baby, we're almost married. Danny said, continuing to hold her hand. If only it wasn't for this trouble, and we can say anything to each other. And it's not that bad. Well, some words. Millie looked down at her hand lying on the sheet. Exciting. Come on, honey. Take off your clothes. I've missed you. Millie stared at her husband. But we can't. Nothing to do. We can't make love if that's what you mean, 
he said, his eyes glittering. But there's something else. What can you do? If you love me enough. You know that I love you, Millie muttered. Then take off your clothes, he croaked. Millie had no idea what was on his mind, but she wanted to please him. It seemed especially important to her after what had happened just recently on the street. Millie got up and turned away from the bed. She unzipped the dress, then pulled it off her shoulders, letting it fall to the floor. Millie was naked except for her bra. Danny stared at her beautifully shaped ass, at her silky and plump buttocks. Millie felt a tingling sensation in her body as she reached for the clasp of her bra and undid it. My God, you're beautiful, Danny said. His tone was both reverent and passionate. Her cheeks turned pink. Millie smiled and walked over to the bed. A barely perceptible shudder ran through her body. Danny turned slightly and held out both hands. He slid one hand down her slender, graceful back. The other slid up her thigh. They met, clasping her buttocks in their palms. Danny pulled Millie closer to him. Knowing what he wanted, Millie leaned forward. Danny, please. Tensing with excitement, Millie pulled back the sheet and slipped her hand into the fly of his pajamas. She grabbed the warm, upward-pointing flesh of her fiancé and pulled it out. Millie, baby, don't throw it like it's a red-hot poker, he said. It's hot in here. I know. It's hot for you. Play with it, honey. What do you mean? Don't you know how much a guy likes to be played with? Danny's eyes glittered. You know, I've never seen another man. Thus, Millie said. Put your arm around him, Danny instructed hoarsely. Move it up and down for her. Millie blinked at him. Why? I would be in heaven for pleasure. A girl did it for me once. In the city, in a brothel. Pete and Cal took me there when I turned 16. The girl I was with seemed to take pleasure in the fact that I was still a virgin. But Danny assumed that no decent girl would do such a thing. But God, if she only wanted to, that would be the most beautiful thing in the world. Why don't decent girls do this? For the sake of love. What cheaters do for money. But then, the girl did this to me not only for the money. She did it because she wanted to. She wasn't sure if she wanted to do what he asked her to do. For some reason, it seemed disgusting to her. But this request piqued her curiosity. Will I really be able to please him? Thus? Oh, that's great, Danny said. Your fingers are so soft, soft and cool. It's simple. Tell me, what should I do? Millie asked. Stroke him, with my own hand, up and down, gradually. Right? Oh, yes, it is. Great, oh, baby, that's... Right. Nice. Millie felt pretty stupid. But the fact that Danny was clearly enjoying it gave her pleasure. Stronger now, Danny groaned. And faster. He grabbed her swaying and trembling breasts, squeezing them. She felt pretty exciting because she was giving Danny pleasure. Although she also felt some disappointment inside her. But I couldn't figure out why. Oh my God, how nice, Danny whispered, closing his eyes. Baby. Oh, wow, it's so cool, honey. Hurry up. Millie started working with her hand faster. Baby, I'm going to... Oh, oh, ah. Danny's hips jerked and he felt blinding pain. Heck, Doc warned me. He didn't move. Stop, he said. Danny lay panting. What's the matter? Millie asked. She was afraid that she had done something wrong. I moved, and it hurt, he said, speaking with obvious difficulty. Oh, dear, Millie exclaimed. It's all right now. I'll be careful, Danny said, and I won't move. You could start over. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, dear, yes, I have to take it off. Voltage. Suddenly, it all seemed rude and humiliating to Millie. Her thoughts went back to her happy week, when she and Danny constantly made love at the first opportunity. Do you want me to leave? She asked Danny. Thanks. For your help. You probably don't either. I need to rest. His eyes slowly closed. Millie covered him with a sheet and turned away. She glanced at him as she put on her bra. He wasn't looking at her. He was asleep, smiling in his sleep. He's happy, she thought. He's not interested in me anymore. But what about me? Millie put on her dress. She looked at Danny again. He was breathing evenly. His eyes were closed. Good night, darling, she said softly, trying to keep her tone warm. Millie turned off the light and left the room. 
When Millie came downstairs in the morning, Gus and his sons were already having breakfast. Rosa, their plump housekeeper, waited on them. She gave Millie a cheerful smile. Sorry to have breakfast without you, Millie, Gus greeted her with a smile. But we thought about it, that you might want to sleep a little longer. There's no point in you getting up with the roosters just because we have to. It's all right, Millie said, smiling back at Gus. She took her place at the table. Good morning, Millie, Cal said from the other side of the table. Good morning. She looked at Pete. His eyes were fixed on the plate. So I'm going to the county seat and talk to Charlie, Gus said to his sons, obviously continuing the conversation he had started. Maybe he can do something? I don't think so, Pete replied, chewing. Charlie's just sending out tax bills. This happened because Reed pulled some strings and got a tax cut. They were talking about it in the city. Since he owns half of the land in the district, everyone else will naturally have to pay more. This is wrong, Cal exclaimed fervently. Damn it, you're right, his father agreed. I've known Charlie for a long time. Maybe he can give you some advice. Father, you're grasping at straws. Pete said, we're just going to have to get out of this somehow. It's too late to do anything. This should have been done in the spring. But who knew? At current cattle prices, it will ruin us, Gus complained. Rose brought Millie a large glass of orange juice. Millie took a sip thinking about what she had just heard. Danny told her about the problems his family had with a man named Reed. His holdings completely surrounded their ranch, and he pressured the Hinshaw family to sell it. Gus finished his coffee and stood up. I'm sorry, Millie, but I have to go. The county center is over an hour's drive away, and I want to be there when Charlie opens his office. How's Danny this morning? Have you looked in on him? Yes, Millie replied. He's fine. She looked at Pete again and noticed that he was watching her. Noticing her gaze, he quickly averted his eyes and stood up. Come on, Cal, he said. We have to go. I'll be right there, the young man replied, grinning at Millie across the table. Rose brought Millie's breakfast. She had never eaten so much in the morning before. Breakfast consisted of a generous portion of steak with eggs and a stack of hot pies. Cal kept his blue eyes on her as he sipped his coffee. How about I show you the ranch today? Danny won't have that opportunity anytime soon. Thanks, but I'll have to stay here in the house, Millie replied. Danny needs to be looked after. Rosa can look after him. I'd rather do it myself. If I were that one, who was injured? Would you look out for me? Cal asked, his eyes twinkling. I'm Danny's fiance, Millie replied coldly. But now it's like being single again, isn't it? Millie blushed and looked down at her plate. Okay, let me know. If you change your mind, Cal said, getting up. We have very beautiful landscapes. Thanks, Cal. I'll let you know. If I change my mind? Millie looked relieved as the sturdy young man walked out of the dining room. After finishing her breakfast, she was left alone with her thoughts. I must have been out of my mind yesterday. If you let Pete go that far, I've never let any guy do that. Even Danny. When we first started dating, he never got under my dress. And what happened to my panties? Did Pete keep them? And what? If he showed them to Cal, or someone else, and if he told you, someone, how did they get to him? She felt excited, and despite the fact that Millie was alone, she blushed. No, she told herself sternly. I can't think about it. Danny is my fiancé, and I love him. In any case, I can't allow it, for another man to stick his thing in me. Millie felt more and more uncomfortable. She went out onto the porch. The day was already warm. The bright sun shone in a cloudless sky. Millie stood in the shade under the roof, inhaling the subtle, invigorating scent of the prairie. Have you decided to go out? Get some air? Cal said, coming out of a small building next to the house. Just for a minute, Millie replied. Cal grinned as he approached her. I had to adjust the pump, he said. Millie said nothing, looking into the distance. You need to show me how to turn it on and turn it off. We only run it for a few minutes a day to fill the water tank for the house. Let's go. I'll show you. You can do it yourself later. Millie followed Cal. He stepped aside, allowing her to enter first. An electric motor hummed inside. The pipe ran down from the engine. This is our well, Cal said. Look down there. Leaning against the security fence, Millie leaned forward. Suddenly, she felt hands on the back of her thighs. 
She straightened up quickly, but Cal's hand managed to slip under her skirt and pressed against her panty-clad bottom. Stop it, she exclaimed indignantly, turning to face Cal. Cal wrapped Millie in a tight hug, hugging her to his chest. His lips covered Millie's. He didn't try to use his tongue, but his kiss was fervent and passionate. At the same time, his hand was stroking and squeezing her buttock. Clenching her fists, Millie slapped Cal's back. She tried to pull away from his embrace. Pressing her lips to Cal's, Millie bit his lip. He pulled away from her. Millie was breathing heavily and looking at him with indignation in her eyes. You had no right to do that. If only Danny knew about this, he would have beaten you up. That scared me. He couldn't have done it. He can't beat anyone up, Cal said contemptuously. He can't even get out of bed. And you? There's no need to act so arrogant and overbearing. Pete showed me your panties, which he took off you yesterday. Millie gasped. Her face turned red. It was, it's not like that at all. I wouldn't let Pete take my panties off, Millie said, turning purple red. He's, he's, I couldn't stop him. Oh, of course, Cal laughed. Listen, no girl will let you take off her panties. If she doesn't want it, or if the guy doesn't point a knife or a gun at her, I bet Pete didn't do it. No, but he is, he said, for using you. No, of course not, Kayla laughed out loud. Well, if old Pete didn't use you, he was very close to it. How come you let him get this far, and you won't let me? Cal took a step toward her. Millie backed away. Her eyes were wild with anger. I, I, will tell your father everything. Yes? Why don't you tell Danny some more? He will be very interested to know. Cal moved closer to her, pinning her against the wall of the barn. If you were going to tell your father, what did you do with Pete last night? You could have done it at night, or this morning. You don't need a fuss, baby. Now be nice. Cal's hand covered Millie's left breast, and he rolled the elastic ball through her blouse and bra. Millie gasped but did nothing. She wanted to scream, but she was afraid of what would happen if someone came and caught her and Cal together. Gus is gone. Only Rose and Pete were left. She felt dizzy. Please. No need. Stop it, Millie exclaimed, pushing his hand away. Cal kissed her again, pressing her back against the barn. What worried the distraught girl the most right now was her reaction to Cal's rude actions, as if she really wanted him. But she knew that wasn't the case. His kiss and touch had offended her greatly, and at the same time, aroused. Realizing as well as Millie that he would not be able to make further progress with her in the cramped pump room, Cal released her, stepping back slightly. Her gaze instinctively fell on the lump in his groin. Her cheeks burned even hotter. Cal grinned, studying her. I'll let you go this time, he said. It'll give you a chance to think about everything. We could have fun if you would stop being arrogant and arrogant. Danny won't find out. And Pete, too. I'm not one to brag. Millie didn't believe it. He would brag as much as Pete. If not more. I have such a feeling. What's going on between them? Some kind of competition. Which one of them will be able to break me first? Millie slid along the wall and jumped out of the pumping station. Her cheeks were still on fire. She heard Cal's laughter behind her. But he didn't follow her. Millie was about to enter the house when she noticed a car heading up the driveway to the house. It was a new sports model, the sun reflecting off its chrome trim. Millie waited, thinking that she might have to greet the visitor, although she still felt excited about Cal. Just at that moment, he came out of the pumping station and stopped, also watching the approaching car. Millie, noticing him, entered the house. She stopped in front of the mirror in the empty living room and looked at herself. Millie took a few deep breaths to calm down then let her hair down over her shoulders. And only after she felt ready to face her fiancé, she went upstairs. But deep down, she was plagued by guilt. It was my fault. To the same extent as theirs. She thought of Pete and Cal. I shouldn't have let them go that far. I should have stopped them right away. And now? Pete will tell everyone that he took off my panties. Cal can't help but brag either. Millie panicked a little when she got to Danny's room, but she took a few deep breaths pulled herself together, and opened the door. Millie came into the room, forcing a smile. Cal swaggered over to the fancy car parked in front of the house. Hello, he said with a grin. 
The driver and the only passenger was a young woman with bright brown hair arranged in a bizarre hairstyle. She was wearing sunglasses. Her pink lips glistened in the sun. Cal's gaze dropped to the luscious white cleavage opening in the plunging neckline of her blouse. Is this Hinshaw's place? The girl asked. Her voice was carefully modulated to achieve a special effect. The little hairs on Cal's neck stood on end. That's right. He continued to grin. Who would you like to see? The girl took off her glasses. Her eyes were the color of transparent aquamarine. You're Pete Hinshaw, aren't you? Her lips curved invitingly. No, it's not like that. Pete is my brother. Cal visually caressed the slender legs of a girl in elegant stockings. Her miniskirt allowed him to appreciate her legs. Is he here? The redhead asked. Yes, probably in the barn. Uh, would you be so kind as to call him? Of course. Uh, who, should I say, needs it? My name is Viv Lanier. I'm from Reno. Of course. Well, just a minute, Miss Lanier. Cal flashed another smile. I'll be right there. The girl laughed throatily and turned off the car engine. Cal hurried into the barn. He found Pete throwing hay. Where the hell have you been? The older brother snapped. Do you expect me to do this damn job alone? Someone wants to see you. Yes? Supergirl. Cal's eyes flashed. Brother, you'll be stunned to see her. Who is she? Pete started down the stairs. Her name is Viv Lanier. She said she was from Reno. And she asked about me? Yeah. Pete headed out of the barn. Cal followed him. Pete stopped. She asked me. And you? Gather some hay for now? Pete, for God's sake, Cal grumbled. When Pete got to the car, he understood the reason for Cal's excitement. Pete Hinshaw? The girl asked. Yes, he said, examining the girl from head to toe. Oh, it's going to be fun. She smiled seductively. I'm a writer, Mr. Hinshaw. Uh, may I call you Pete? Of course. His dark eyes slid over her voluminous breasts. My name is Viv. I've made some inquiries. And I was told that you are the person who needs to be consulted about the management of a cattle ranch. I mean, I don't want to manage. She laughed softly. I just want to write about it. I need some information. Well, this place is not mine. It belongs to my father. But you kind of control it, together with him. You could say that, Pete replied proudly, allowing himself a slight smile. Then you're just the man I need. His hand was on the car door and Viv put her palm on it. Where can we talk? Her warm, gentle touch sent a shiver through Pete's body. Well, uh... Wherever you like, Miss, Viv, uh, into the house? You were just working in the barn, weren't you? Yes. Then let's go there. I want to see what you've been doing, and you can explain it to me. Well, of course, if that's what you want. He moved away from the door, and Viv opened the car door and began to get out of it. He assessed her hips, catching a quick flash of her white panties before she stood up. They walked slowly towards the barn. Pete was acutely aware of the warmth radiating from her. It seemed amazing to him that she suddenly appeared out of nowhere and called him. Her explanation was incredible, but Pete wasn't going to question it. She was here, and he wanted to enjoy her presence. What a beautiful big barn, Viv said. What do you keep in it? Hay and special feeds? Well, and other things. We keep the horses in the stable, which is connected to it. Why is this place called the Stallion Ranch? Viv smiled at him. That's what they called it before my father bought it. There used to be a lot of wild horses here. The people who settled in this place made a living by catching and taming them. How interesting. We sometimes catch a wild Mustang. My younger brother was going to drive around one a few days ago. He dropped it. Oh, is he all right? Viv seemed worried. He broke his hip. They reached the barn door, and Pete stepped aside to let Viv go ahead. He watched her buttocks flex in her short, tight skirt. From above, Cal saw them enter. Curious, he put the pitchfork aside and went downstairs. There's not much to see here, Pete said quickly. Why don't we go to the stable? Viv looked from Pete to Cal, who was approaching with a wide grin on his face. You'd better keep working on the hay, Pete told him. What can we do for you, Miss Lanier? Cal asked, ignoring his brother. I explained to Pete that I'm a writer and I'm looking for some information about cattle breeding. This is my little brother Cal, Pete said reluctantly. I've already met him, 
Viv smiled warmly at him. Call me Viv. Well, I'd love to show you this place, Viv. Cal took her hand. If Pete is very busy, I'm free now. You told me that you need to check the vaccination records. The vet will arrive in the morning, and you're the only one who can read your chicken doodles on these cards. Cal grinned mischievously. Anyway, Millie tends to get jealous if she sees you with another girl. Who is Millie? Viv asked. Nobody, Pete snapped, glaring at his brother. She's not nobody. Fuck off, Cal. I don't want to cause any trouble, Pete, Viv said. I guess Cal can show me what I want to see. Cal shot Pete a triumphant look. Pete glared after them. I didn't know Pete had a girlfriend who lives here at the ranch, Viv told Cal as they left the barn. Her concern seemed strange to Cal. He only mentioned Millie to embarrass his brother. But since it mattered to Viv, Cal decided to make the most of Millie. Yes, Pete is very attached to Millie, he replied. You probably have as much to tell about ranch management as he does, don't you? I mean, even though he's older? Of course. I can tell you everything you need to know. I can show you something, too. He grinned significantly and squeezed Viv's hand. That sounds interesting, she purred, letting her hip touch his. This is my lucky day. Pete can take Millie. I won't bother him. I'm going to take something more beautiful. Wow, Viv murmured enthusiastically as her hand stroked the front of Cal's tight jeans. They had just inspected the stable and walked around to the far side where there was a pile of clean straw. The place was secluded, out of sight from the house and from the work area on the other side of the barn. Viv invited them to sit down to talk more comfortably. Relaxing on the soft straw, the arousing young woman deliberately leaned against Cal. Cal wasn't the kind of guy who didn't take the hint and miss the opportunity. He hugged and kissed her. He pinned a beautiful red-haired girl on the straw with her back to the ground and began to run his hands over her body. She squirmed pleasantly, making no effort to restrain him. Mmm, you are so big and strong. Viv touched the front of Cal's trousers again, even more boldly this time. Hurry up, she whispered. No one has come yet. Cal needed no further encouragement. Neither Viv, who was looking up, nor Cal, whose face was buried in the girl's neck, saw the male figure appear around the corner of the stable. Pete stopped and stared at the erotic sight. And he hated Cal. First, Danny brought a cute little chick into the house that drives me crazy. Now Cal has stolen from under my nose the tidbit that ever wandered into our ranch. I was the one who was supposed to get this hot, bed-hungry, red-haired fool, and I was left with nothing. It's not fair and I'm not just going to let it go. The moment was indeed right for Cal. It would be a favor to Danny on my part. After all, he himself can't take care of his hot young cheater. And as for her, if she didn't tell anyone about what happened last night, then she won't tell anyone anything at all. She will be mine. I'll use it wherever I want and when I want to. Pete really believed at that moment that Millie would belong to him. Tonight is exactly the night. I just need to take a step the right step.